My old friends, the two Faithins. It's been a while. How have you both been lately? Not too bad, thanks to you. Of course, things would be even better if you could get us the business we need. Oh, dear. Well, when you say it like that, I'm not quite sure how to put the next part. Seems you don't have any good news for us today. Please hear me out. It's completely out of my hands. The city has recently beefed up security measures for the election. Not just on the main roads. They've also got people stationed on the hollow exits leading to the outer ring. Although there have always been quite a few outer ring smugglers using the hollows for transport, risks have skyrocketed recently, and most clients have given up on doing business in the city for now. Even if you find someone willing to risk it, those small fry definitely won't have what you're looking for. So you passed up on my valuable commission to do business in the outer ring. You're looking for a reliable source of intel, right? Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Shepard. It seems to keep my old clients happy. The less I say, the better. Just take what I'm about to say as me talking to myself. If you want to gather information in the Outer Ring, try to get in with the biker gangs there. Biker gangs? The people of the Outer Ring live far apart, and the transportation of supplies relies heavily on the biker gangs. They're well respected among the residents, and nothing happens there without them knowing about it. It's unfortunate that this option is beyond the scope of my business, so this is all the help I can offer you. <clears throat> well, that's all I have to say. I'll let you get back to your business. If you change your mind and want to make some easy money in the near future, feel free to contact me anytime. Thanks. We'll think about it. See ya! We got a useful piece of intel, but it definitely won't make finding Pearlman any easier. We have no other choice. The Outer Ring is completely out of our scope of operations. Speaking of which, finding intel on Pearlman has been harder and harder in the city lately. Even Fairy hasn't been able to find any useful leads. Wise, don't you think this whole thing is strange? I get what you're saying. The Outer Ring's huge. But for one person to survive there, it would be impossible to stay completely off the grid. Exactly. Perlman's escape caused quite a stir, and public security is looking for him. You'd think there'd be all kinds of intel on him by now. How does a living, breathing person disappear into thin air? I said I give up! You win! <laughs> now that's more like it, old man. If you'd spoken up sooner, we could have saved ourselves the effort. All right. Any other challengers? Anyone else? Big Daddy, we got the Spark Stone. Now you can't say it's not the right time for us to join the Torrid Inferno. We, the sons of Caledon, are the strongest. This time, I'm gonna swipe while the iron's hot and seize the Overlord's throne! <sighs> it's strike while the iron's hot, you idiot. Huh. The Overlord's throne, huh? Caesar, well, my opinion hasn't changed. Since you've earned the right, go test the waters. Huh? Aren't you coming with us? I'm retired. This kind of action-packed stuff should be left to the young'uns. Besides, someone's got to look after the transport business. Caesar! Big Daddy! We found something amazing over there! Oh, it's an airship! This is the first time I've seen one up close. Hey, Caesar, there's a live one over here. It's such a serious accident. This guy's lucky to be alive. I feel like I've seen this face before. It's not just any guy. This is the defendant in that vision case from the city. He's on the public security's most wanted list. So much money! Enough to drink nitro fuel like water for the next 30 years! Enough to buy five steel tusks? <sighs> public security sure is generous. 
my security. No! Don't hand me over to public security. I'm begging you. I, I know who the real mastermind is. I have evidence of their crimes. Evidence. <sighs> to be honest, I'm starting to doubt if Perlman is even still alive. We can still rely on hand for the sacrifice investigation, but the Cunning Hairs' lawsuit won't be on hold like this forever, will it? Master, second assistant, there is an incoming call from Billy. Should I connect the call for you? Speak of the devil. Barry, put the call through. Oh, manager, you're home! I just sent you a message, but you didn't reply. We're both here. What's up, Billy? Manager, I have something really important to tell you, but I prefer to do it face to face. I'm at the corner behind Bardic Needle. Can you meet me there? Billy, that's not far away. Why don't you just come to the store? Uh, because the vehicle I'm driving won't fit through. Uh, wait. A public security officer is coming over. I gotta talk to them real quick. Hey, so I'm hanging up. I'll be waiting. I'm counting on you. What is Billy talking about? The Cunning Hares usually park their car in our parking lot, don't they? But since you said so, Wise, you should go meet him. Billy, have you left the Cunning Hairs? What's with the Leaps and Bounds truck and this bamboo? No way! I'm pretty happy with my life now. And besides, the boss hasn't paid me one denny of my bonus yet. This truck and the bamboo both belong to the Sons of Caledon, one of the Outer Ring biker gangs. The truck has a new Eridu entry pass, and recently non-residents have had to queue for a long time to get in and out of the city. So I'm helping them transport goods. After all, I used to work for them. I didn't know you've spent time in the Outer Ring. Yeah. Actually, I lived in the Outer Ring for a while. It was a stroke of luck that eventually brought me to the city. Manager, we can chat about this later. I have something important to tell you. The Sons of Caledon have intel on Perlman! Oh? What kind of intel do they have, specifically? I asked, but that's info they don't give up easily. Manager, the Sons of Caledon know we're looking for Perlman. They said they can provide exclusive intel on one condition. They want to talk business with Faith and face to face. You mean they're looking for a proxy? They didn't put it like that, but that's my guess. Manager? Though we really need Perlman for the case we're handling. Nicole said we owe you, so you have the final say on who to work with. Anyway, I'll be helping the Sons of Caledon upgrade their Bang Boo and purchase supplies in the city over the next few days, and then I'll head out to meet them. If you want to meet them face to face, you should come with me. Wise, you're back. What did Billy want to talk about? The Sons of Caledon, one of the Outer Ring biker gangs, has info on Perlman. 
but they want to talk business face to face. Wise, what do you think? We finally have a lead on Pearlman. There's no way we can pass this up. And Shepard said these people in the Outer Ring are really in the know. Right, but they want you to go to the Outer Ring in person. There are too many unknowns. Billy will be there too. Plus, he's still doing favors for his old boss, so they must get along well. <sighs> All right, I get it. The good thing is that the Outer Ring isn't under New Eridu's jurisdiction, and proxies can operate there unrestricted. So we don't have to worry about anyone finding out that we're Faithen. Wise, you should spend the next couple of days preparing for the trip and taking care of any loose ends. Whoa, it stretches on forever. What do you think, manager? The Outer Ring scenery is pretty nice, right? It's also super fun to drive here. But this road is too close to a hollow, and there are so many other hollows around. <laughs> There's nothing we can do about it. The Outer Ring lacks ether technology, making it hard to eliminate hollows. They can't even mine ether resources. Hey, you see that big guy over there? That machinery... Is it an oil pump? Oh, you're good! This area is called the Old Oil Field. The residents here still rely on petroleum for their livelihoods. Eh? Wait, wait, wait! What's up with that truck?! Oh man, oh man, oh man, we're gonna crash! Billy, turn right! Drive into the hollow! Oh my, oh my. Interesting. They actually drove into the hollow. And here I thought I'd get to see some explosive carnage. Lord Lucius, I did what you asked. Please spare me. Please spare me. Although the Sons of Caledon meeting their end in a hollow only earns a 61 from me, I'll let it slide this time considering your hard work. I hope that in the future, you'll remember this lesson and stop meddling in things that you shouldn't. The second-in-command of the Vanquishers colluding with an Aether Corporation in the city? That's not a joke you should make lightly. Manager! Manager! Are you alright? I'm fine, Billy. Don't worry. <sighs> That's good. When you hit your head on my arm just now, it made a really loud sound. <sighs> that oil tanker heading straight for us was terrifying. We only made it thanks to your quick thinking. 
And the vehicle isn't totaled. But we've fallen into a hollow now. What's our next move? Billy, let's see what we have on hand that we can use. Oh, right. Now that you mention it. There's anti-corruption serum in the truck that the Sons of Caledon asked me to buy. Neither of you can stay in the hollow for long, right? Also, I've got a few discarded data piles from the city. Billy, that's how we escape from the hollow. There must be a carrot in the Sons of Caledon's bangboo. Plus, the new data from the data piles. Oh, that's right! You're a proxy! You can calculate a path out of the hollow! All right! Let's get to work installing the data piles! Let's go, manager. I've got the data piles. Okay, installing three should be enough. We've got ethereals. They must have been drawn in by the data piles. Don't worry, manager. I'll handle them. Yeah. Back to the car and get out of here. You can do it, manager! We're almost there! I'm really not built for this level of activity. minute, little bro. Oh, so this is the proxy I've heard so much about. <laughs> Come on, brother. You've gotten a bit rusty. Oh, 
All right, here we go. It's time to shine. chomped to pieces by ethereals already. Don't worry, big sis. I made out of tough enough stuff to hold out. <laughs> Brother, you had nowhere to run, but you've still got a mouth on you. Lighter, you just don't know me well enough. My body is made out of enhanced materials now. Forget about ethereals. Even Nicole wouldn't dare hit me barehanded. <sighs> It seems that Nicole is pretty high up on the pecking order. So, big sis, lighter, how did you end up here? Oh, I got a strange call earlier from a young girl. She was all panicked and said you fell into this hollow. So it was the deputy manager. Lucy thought it might be a trick, but the intel she gave about you was flawless. And she even laid out a rescue route. Oh, so this is the legendary proxy, huh? Who'd have thought? Thanks. You arrived just in time. <sighs> hey! Proxy! What's wrong? Manager! Manager! Stay with me! Quick! We gotta get out of here! I have to take some of the blame for this accident as well. <sighs> we, the sons of Caledon, must honor our guests with the finest funeral! Lighter, you will be carrying the coffin. That's a heavy responsibility. <laughs> we'll need to keep the hearse driving steady. Piper! Ooh, got it. I'll make sure it's a smooth send off. Bernice! <laughs> Of course, you'll be handling the cremation. You got it! Just gotta burn everything to ashes and smithery! Lucy? L lucy yeah. Can you all stop goosing around? <laughs> don't be upset. It's not every day we get to have fun with the cremation ceremony. You don't have fun at our guest's expense! Bernice! Put away the flamethrower, now! Why? Is it, how are you feeling? Are you hurt? Sorry. Sorry. We got a little carried away. Welcome to the Outer Ring! May you rise from the ashes! Faithin! Who would have thought you'd both end up here all because of an accident? 
Must have scared you back then, huh? <laughs> Relax! You two and Billy are thick as thieves, so that makes us friends. Ah, uh, yeah, right. We've been partners in crime for a while now. <laughs> Time for a formal introduction. We're the Sons of Caledon, a biker gang from the Outer Ring. I'm the current boss, Caesar. Billy should have already told you why we invited you. The Sons of Caledon need a favor from you. As for Pearlman, his airship crashed here in the Outer Ring during landing. He's lucky to be alive, but he's badly injured and hasn't woken up yet. Wait, you mean you have Pearlman? Yeah. Wait, didn't Lucy tell you? Don't worry, we'll make sure he heals up. And once he's awake, we'll hand him over to you. Uh, wait, Caesar, are you stupid? Negotiations haven't even started, and you already handed over such an important bargaining chip? Negotiations? Bargaining chip? Lucy, again with the pettiness. This kind of manipulation and leveraging? Uh-uh. That's not very overlordy. Ugh, easy for you to say. I worked my butt off to keep this info under wraps just for today. If we can't strike a deal with Phaethon, where do you expect me to find a reliable proxy for the Tor de Inferno? The Tor de Inferno is our business. I never planned to count on anyone else. Don't worry, proxy. You coming to the Outer Ring is a sign of respect. Even if you don't agree to help us, I won't go back on my word about Pearlman. Caesar, we appreciate your kindness. But as they say, no work, no reward. Bell is right. Actually, we only came today hoping to get a bit of information on Pearlman. We could never have expected what you're offering. Since you've been so honest with us, we'll do everything we can to help you. <laughs> Straight to the point! I like it! Can you relax a little now, Lucy? Thanks, Faithen. Your willingness to help will be huge for us. Can you give us more details about the commission? The Tor Inferno we mentioned just now. That's what we need your help with, Proxy. This is the biggest event in the old oil field. Only the strongest squads of bikers can compete. It's a test in the hollows to find out who's the best. Caesar, there's no way they'll get it when you put it like that. <sighs> Let me explain. Simply put, the Tour de Inferno is an off-road motorbike race that crosses through a hollow. Only two teams compete, and the rules are simple. The first team to cross the hollow, reach the finish point at Cinderglow Lake, and throw a spark stone into the lake, wins. I never knew you held such dangerous races here in the Outer Ring. Proxy, holding the Tord Inferno isn't just for the thrill of it. It's also a way to regularly ensure the safety of our oil resources in the form of a race. After all, oil is the lifeblood of the old oil field. Naturally, for us biker gangs, the Tord Inferno also serves another purpose. The winner of the race becomes Overlord of the Old Oil Field Motor League. That's right, Faithen. The Overlord is recognized as the top dog of the Motor League. The current Overlord's faction is called the Vanquishers, and their boss held the title for years. Oh, I've been itching to challenge him for a while now. I see. Lofty aspirations. <laughs> oh, Caesar, if all you think about is shallow stuff like that, it won't be long before the sons of Caledon are mine. People are gunning for the Overlord spot for more than just becoming the top dog. We're not some school kids hooked on fighting manga. The future of the oil industry in the old oil field relies on the support of the Motor League in every sense of the word. And as the leader of the Motor League, the Overlord is in charge of assigning transport routes. That means they hold real, tangible power. For the past six months, the Vanquishers have only given us the worst routes. Ugh, they're definitely messing with us behind our backs. But when I went to confront them, that smug 
second-in-command Lucius just said, the Overlord isn't in the old oil field right now, and the roots are decided at random. Hmm. Speaking of the Overlord, he hasn't been seen for half a year. Who knows what he's been doing? But Lucy, what are you afraid of? Even if the roots aren't great, with our skills, it's nothing we can't handle. Besides, you're just mad because there's nowhere to buy makeup and snacks on these roots. Shut up, Caesar! Didn't we agree you wouldn't criticize me in front of guests? What? You call that criticism? It's the truth! And you're the one who's always calling me an idiot! You think I don't have any self-respect? <laughs> you ruin one's plans each time you open your mouth and expect me to praise you? Yeah, yeah. Lady Lucy Montefio, I ruined your plans. <laughs> Are you forgetting who's the one who was so excited about meeting the legendary proxies that she couldn't sleep all night? Ugh, enough, Caesar! I challenge you to a duel! Today's the day for the Sons of Caledon to change hands! <laughs> Bring it on! Then we'll see who's scared. Lighter! Come here and be the judge! Um, what was that all about? Oh, it's fine, Proxy. Don't worry. This is a two or three times a day kind of thing. Yeah, it's no big deal. Just don't get roped into being the referee, or you might end up on the wrong side of both of them. Anyway, Proxies, it's great to have your help with the Tour de Inferno. Let's give it our best shot. Morning. Did you sleep well? You were exhausted yesterday, right? As soon as your head hit the pillow, you were out like a light. Billy, you look like you're getting ready to go somewhere. <laughs> Actually, it's the opposite. I just took the other manager back to your store. The other manager and Caesar decided that they're going to move some of the equipment into your car and set up a mobile proxy workshop. You mean moving the HDD equipment out here? Right. The other manager said working in the city would make communication difficult. Plus, smart devices are few and far between in the outer ring. And long-range data transmission could slow us down. Oh, morning, Proxy. You're awake. Billy's right. You'll be more efficient working from here in the outer ring. Don't worry. We'll take care of the power and network connection. Even in the outer ring, you'll be, uh... Walking on thin ice! <laughs> Hearing that makes me a little nervous about our new working environment. <laughs> By the way, before the equipment arrives, 
Let me take you to Blazewood and introduce you to the townsfolk. Lucy said you might not be used to roughing it with us, so I got the mayor to prepare a place for you. No, you shouldn't have. Ah, it's no problem. After we get back from town, go talk to Lucy and the others. I heard from your sister that you need to collect some hollow data before the race. Lucy and the gang are also preparing for the Tour d'Inferno. You should be able to help each other out. So this is the proxy from the city? Guess folks from New Eridu start working young, just like us. Caesar, who is this young lady? Young lady? <laughs> you city folks talk funny. I'm Casa, the mayor of Blazewood. The sons of Caledon have taken good care of our town. So if you need anything, just let me know. You can stay in the house behind me tonight. Sorry, it's still got some stuff that hasn't been moved out but I'll get someone to clean it up. Hey, Casa, I notice a lot of people in town making these woven items. We don't have a choice. The pipeline to town still isn't fixed. Without a gas station, all we can do is make handicrafts to earn a living. Luckily, we got a big order recently, and with a tour d'Inferno coming up, the Sunflints are selling like hotcakes. What's a Sunflint? Oh, it's a kind of handicraft woven from straw. During the Tour d'Inferno, almost every house in the old oil field hangs them up. The pattern looks like a face. <laughs> the elders say this is the face of the god of sun and fire who guides heroes to ignite Cinder Lake and return safely from the hollow. But there's another saying. The upside down person on the Sunflint is the first overlord of the Motor League. Such a unique pattern must have a story behind it, right? Yup. Actually, this pattern represents the legend of the first overlord's Tor Inferno. Though the old oil field can still produce oil, did you know the core oil field was swallowed up by a hollow decades ago? Wait, isn't oil susceptible to ether corruption? Mm-hmm. After the disaster, etheric matter seeped through the underground facilities and oil pumps, ruining the shallow oil reserves. But luckily, the collapse of the only deep drilling facility formed a unique natural gas vent. The burning gas kept the etheric matter from spreading further down. So the natural gas vent is Cinder Glow Lake. The appearance of Cinder Lake saved everyone's livelihoods in the old oil field. But even with Cinder Lake, we can't rest easy. Natural gas and etheric matter burning together can easily turn into ether crystals building up around the lake. If left unchecked, more and more crystals will build up and eventually block the vent, extinguishing the lake. If that happens, the underground oil will be doomed. There was a time when Cinder Lake nearly went out. In order to save it, a young man and his friends risked their lives to enter the hollow and blast open an ether crystal using a special spark stone, just like the one in my hand. but the hollow was treacherous, and they didn't even have a carrot with them. By the time they reached Cinder Lake, it was almost completely covered with crystals. Out of desperation, the young man rode his bike into the only spot that was still burning in Cinder Lake and managed to ignite it. So, everyone makes sunflints in memory of his sacrifice. <laughs> oh, proxy. 
never said the first overlord died there. It's normal for the proxy to think that way. After all, everyone who went to Cinder Lake with him thought he was dead, but a day later, he miraculously emerged from the hollow alive. Folks say the god of the sun and fire was moved by his bravery, allowing him to be reborn from the flames. Since then, the residents have drawn his face and the image of him diving into Cinder Lake on their sunflints. There's even a line from a folk song that goes, Diving into the fiery sea, the hero returns valiantly. Glad the story has a happy ending. <laughs> right? If it ended tragically, the Torrid Inferno wouldn't be so epic! Of course, the first overlord did more than that. After he returned, he gathered all the biker gangs in the old oil field and formed the Motor League. He also made the rule that the Torrid Inferno would be held every few years to prevent a similar crisis at Cinder Lake. Yeah, that's why the Torrid Inferno continues to this day. It's still a feat only the strongest bikers can accomplish. But for us residents, it's become more of a festival. You were just going to meet the mayor? What took you so long? We saw the Sunflints in Blazewood and heard about the legend of the Torrid Inferno. <laughs> ah, so that's why Caesar was so pumped up. After all, that's her favorite story. She even said her dream is to become a hero, just like the first Overlord. <laughs> If she really wants to be like the first overlord, she better forget those childish fairy tales fast. But the first overlord was a real person though, right? Exactly. And it's because he actually existed that we should look at him objectively, no? I mean, the Torrid Inferno only happened a few decades ago. How come it's turned into this huge legend? But using an act of God to spread his story far and wide? The first overlord must have been pretty smart. Lucy, Caesar said this kind of old person talk will give you wrinkles. Nonsense! Don't listen to her lies! I use exfoliating face masks every day. No way I'll get wrinkles. <clears throat> Proxy, you can see it too, right? The Torrid Inferno is less about heroics and more about the First Overlord securing control of the old oil field. That's a very realistic take. It sounds like something a new Eridu entrepreneur would say. Wow, Proxy, you're so smart. Lucy is actually from New Eridu. So you're from the city? What made you give up that life? It's because I never wanted that kind of life where everything is already laid out for you. Plus, my dad only cares about profits and business. Exactly! It's different in the Outer Ring, especially in the old oil field. The Motor League is all about freedom and justice. <laughs> That's what they say, but to survive, you can't forget about profits and business. Take the Sons of Caledon, for example. Employees need paychecks, vehicles need maintenance, and we need supplies that the city won't sell us. Which means we need connections and money. Proxy, I wasn't just making it up when I said the Overlord's faction is targeting us. The Sons of Caledon have had better rep than the Vanquishers these past few years. So, of course, they're jealous. But the recent bad roots we've been getting have hurt our income, and recruiting new members has been an issue. So, for the future survival of the Sons of Caledon, we have to take the Overlord's title. 
It's good to have you helping with the preparations for the Tour d'Inferno. <laughs> I knew someone as sharp as Faithen would get it. Brute strength and passion alone won't get you far. Just watch. It won't be long before I beat Caesar and take the sons of Caledon from her. <laughs> Lucy, you wouldn't admit it earlier, but it turns out you lost last night. N no, I didn't lose. It was just a momentary truce. After all, prepping for the Turd Inferno is what's most important now. I can put becoming the boss on the back burner. Proxy, let's talk business. The other Faithen mentioned this morning that the lack of hollow data in the Outer Ring is affecting your ability to perform in the Hollows. So for now, we'll be going into the Hollows with you to gather data. Oh, I also need your help with something. The vehicles for the Tour de Inferno need some modifications. We need to get a hold of the necessary parts. Wise, I'm back. Good job, Belle. Come on, I'll help you set up the HDD. No need. I just tested the voltage and network speed here. The HDD is working fine. Fairy and Eos are pretty excited to be in the outer ring. But it's a new environment, so it'll take some getting used to. To help Caesar and the others win the race, let's start by gaining a bit of experience. All right, Wise. If you're ready, let's get going. <laughs> 